Okay, here's the last part of the 2.1 slash 2.2 lesson on simplifying rational expressions. Um, I'm going to do a few examples on dividing rational expressions. So in the previous lessons, I taught you how to simplify and state restrictions. Uh, then I did a couple multiplying rational expressions examples. And lastly, we're going to do a few dividing rational expressions examples. Uh, dividing rational expressions is essentially just as easy as multiplying rational expressions with as long as you remember the first step. So first step, if we look at our steps here on the right-hand side, I'll zoom in a bit. Um, step one, flip the second fraction and change to multiplication question. Because remember when dividing fractions, uh, the rule is you keep the first fraction the same. So 10ab squared over 4a. And you flip the second fraction and change it to a multiplication question. So now it becomes times 12b squared over 15a squared. This second fraction has just been flipped. Okay, and <clears throat> no, keep in mind, I'm just going to point this out, no cross-canceling until after we've done that flip and change it to a multiplication question. Because remember, you can only cross-cancel when multiplying, and I reviewed that in the previous lesson. Okay, now that we've um, flipped our second fraction, changed to multiplication, now it's the same thing we did before. So what you want to do is um, do any cancelling that you can. Remember, now that it's multiplying, we're allowed to cross-cancel. So let's see what we'll do here. Um, <clears throat> I have a 10 over 4, I could simplify that to 5 over 2, I have a 12 over 15, 3 goes into both of those, I could simplify that to 4 over 5, I could simplify more, I could change that 4 over 2 to a 2, that 5 over 5 to a 1, but anyways, um, I'll do that in the next step. Uh, also, I can cancel out that A with that A. And I believe that's all I can do here. I'll do some more on the next step. Anyways, so I have 5b squared over 2 for that fraction times 4b squared, 4b squared over 5a squared. Now what we're going to do is look for more canceling that we can do. I can cross-cancel these 5s, because keep in mind that 5 is being multiplied by the b squared, so I can cancel that. And this 5 is being multiplied by the a squared, so I can cancel that. You can only cancel things that are being multiplied by everything else in the numerator and the denominator. And also I have a 4 over 2, which goes to 2 over 1. Now I can multiply it out. So I have a b squared times a 2b squared. That gives me 2b to the 4 over 1 times a squared, which is just a squared. Nothing else I can simplify there. Now I need to state the restrictions. And keep in mind, you need to state the restrictions all the way through the process, not just for your final expression here. For this final expression, a can't be 0, because if a was 0, the denominator would be equal to 0. But also remember, <clears throat> if we look back to our original expression here, this b right here, this 12b squared, that was in the denominator originally. So I have to consider what would make that denominator equal to 0 as well, even before it was flipped. So if that b was 0, the denominator of this fraction would be 0. Therefore, not only can a not be 0, but b can also not be 0. And those are my restrictions. Even though you don't see b in the denominator anywhere in my simplified steps, in the original question, b was in the denominator, so I need to state the restriction there as well. Okay, we'll do um, b now. Okay, so <clears throat> step one, remember what I told you, just to avoid any errors with cross-canceling too early is what we're going to do. Always step one for a dividing question before we factor anything. We're going to keep the first fraction the same, change it to a multiplication question, and flip the second fraction. So it becomes 20a squared over 5a squared plus 10a. Now that it's a multiplication question, now you are allowed to cross-cancel factors, factors only. Like, don't try and can't, don't do what I'm about to do. Don't cancel out these a squares. You can't do that because this a squared is being added to 2a. This a squared is not a factor. It's not being multiplied by the 2a. You can't cancel it out. Same reasoning for the denominator over there. And actually, before we do any canceling, what we're going to do is factor anything that we're able to factor. So in the numerator of the first one, I can common factor out an a, divide both of those two terms by the a you took out, and you get a plus 2. In the denominator, I have a 3a. 
Now my second fraction, I'm going to change that x to a dot just so we don't get confused thinking that's a variable. So I have my first fraction times, I can't factor anything in the numerator, it's just one term. In the denominator though I can factor out a 5a and be left with a plus 2. Now what we can do, now we can look for any cancelling opportunities. And remember we're multiplying so we're allowed to cross cancel. I can cancel those a plus 2's. I can <coughs> I can cancel out these a's because this a is a factor in the numerator. Remember, you're allowed to cancel factors. I canceled a plus 2 because this a plus 2 is being multiplied by the a, and this a plus 2 is being multiplied by the 5a, so we're allowed to cancel those. Um, also, I have a 20 over 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4 over 1 if we simplify it. And lastly, I have an a squared divided by an a. That's going to give me a to the 1, so one of those is gone. I'm left with an a to the 1, and that a is gone. So what we're left with, uh, this fraction is, I'm left with 1 over 3. Keep in mind, when everything in the numerator is cancelled, you're left with a 1 there, not a 0. You're left with a 1 times, in this fraction, I have 4a over 1. So it's just 4a over 1. That gives me 1 times 4a is 4a, 3 times 1 is 3, and then we have this data restrictions all the way throughout the process. So if we look at our original question, if a was 0, the denominator here would be 0. If a was 0 here, the denominator would be 0, so a can't be 0. And if we look as we simplified further, also we had a factor of a plus 2 in the denominator, so a can't be negative 2. So we have two restrictions, a can't be negative 2 or 0. Those are our two restrictions on the denominator. Alright, and we'll do one more example where we have some quadratics that we have to factor. So step one before you do any factoring is when you have a division question, flip it and change it to flip the second fraction and change it to a multiplication question. So 2x squared minus 8x over x squared minus 3x minus 10 times, and I'll use a dot instead of the x for multiply so I don't get confused with the variables, times 4x squared, oops, sorry, I forgot to flip, times x squared minus 9x plus 20 over 4x squared. So I changed the division to a multiply and flip the second fraction. That's our rule when dividing fractions. You flip the second fraction and multiply. Now that we've done that, now what you may do, now you may factor. So we can common factor the numerator. I can take out a 2x and be left with x minus 4. When I divide both of these terms by the 2x I took out, the denominator, so I'm not going to show many steps here, and to factor a quadratic where the a value is 1, all we have to do is find two numbers that multiply to negative 10, add to negative 3. Those two numbers are negative 5 and 2. So my factors are x minus 5 times x plus 2, because negative 5 and 2 add to negative 3 and multiply to negative 10. Now let's factor um, the quadratic in the numerator here. I need to find two numbers that multiply to 20, add to negative 9. Those two numbers are negative 4 and negative 5. So my factors are x minus 4 and x minus 5. And in the denominator, I have 4x squared. Now, we'll look for any cancelling opportunities. Since we're multiplying, we're allowed to cross-cancel. Um, I can cancel out this factor of x minus 5 with this factor of x minus 5. And I can cancel out this x with one of these x's. So I'm left with an x to 1 on the bottom. The x on the top is gone. And this 2 and this 4 can simplify to 1 over 2. And I believe that's all I can simplify there. So, in our next step, all we're left with here, so in the numerator I have x minus 4 times x minus 4. I'm going to rewrite that in a second, simplified. And in the denominator, I just have x plus 2 times 2x. So, I'll write it as 2x times x plus 2. Um, what I could simplify here, x minus 4 times x minus 4, Anything multiplied by itself, you could write it as a power, as x minus 4 squared over 2x times x plus 2. 
nothing else I can simplify. I can't cancel anything else out. Um, <clears throat> what I can do now, though, is state my restrictions. And keep in mind, you state the restrictions all the way through the process. So if we look at this expression here, before anything was simplified, but after it was factored, in the denominator, x can't be 5, it can't be negative 2, it can't be 0. And also keep in mind, the top here, the top of this fraction, used to be, so this here, it used to be in the denominator there, so I also have to consider restrictions, anything in the numerator here. So x also can't be 4. So it can't be 5, negative 2, 0, or 4. So in order, x can't be negative 2, 0, 4, or 5. I believe those were the restrictions. 4, 5, negative 2, 0. Good. So that's it for dividing rational expressions. Just make sure when you're dividing rational expressions, what you do is first, before you start trying to cancel anything, is you change it to a multiplication question by flipping the second fraction, then do all your factoring, then cross-cancel, then state your restrictions by looking at the restrictions all the way through the question and making sure to consider restrictions on the original denominator before it was flipped. Consider those restrictions as well. Okay, make sure you go to jensenmath.ca. Make sure you practice these questions a lot. Follow the link. It'll take you to the worksheet. Um, and that's it.